If a laser cutter, a 3D printer, a blade cutter and an inkjet printer had a baby, the result would be something like this. It's a new class of device at the consumer level and it's pretty extraordinary. Now, I've been testing this printer for many months, as my patrons know, but it hasn't really been about testing as such. It pretty much works. It also hasn't been about learning to use it. It's a totally different class of device, but the software is intuitive. The hardware is very well made and super smart. Fundamentally, I've been spending my time on getting my head around how this changes so many of my crafting skills forever. So I'm going to cover a bit of a normal review on this device just to explain how it works and to give some credit. But it's more the impact I'm really excited about. So I'll try to hold off that until the end to really cover what I want to talk about and what I want your help in brainstorming. Before I get to that part, let's go through the device a bit. The Eufy Make E1 is a very new class of maker tool. It's described as a personal 3D texture UV printer, which requires a bit of explanation. As their name suggests, UV printers use UV light to cure UV inks onto surfaces. This is how you get those professional grade results on production items. UV inks have the best of just about all worlds, really. They can be printed in bright, vivid colours like an inkjet printer, meaning you have millions of colours at your disposal. They also cure and instantly, meaning fast and reliable production. Furthermore, they adhere to pretty much any surface, meaning you can print to plastic, to wood, to metal, to glass, to acrylic, to ceramic, and many, many more. Eufy Make list more than 300 materials on their site. So UV inks are cool, but they're not new. What the E1 has really focused on are the two parts that have been missing from the equation, accessibility and automation. UV printers have been massive, costly, unwieldy, and very high maintenance. So that's fine for massive print runs in factories, but really out of reach of the general crafter. Eufy Make have somehow nailed this. They have a device that's portable, self-maintaining, easy to use, and featuring some innovations that make your mind boggle. For example, once you can print a layer of UV ink, then you can print another and another. It uses that ability to instantly cure to allow layered printing, meaning you can make 3D textured prints, which I think changes so many crafting hobbies forever. To illustrate this, let's go through some of these crafts. You can not just print a poster of an oil painting, you can print every brushstroke. You cannot just decorate your phone case with a sticker, you can make it look three-dimensional. Fancy making some ultimate board game pieces? Oh yes. And the ability to print on anything then blows your mind completely. Think of those 3D prints and models and woodworking projects and more that you make. If I can get into 3D graphics for a bit, they have layers of maps that give games and films and more that realism. You model your basic design, but a lot of the detail comes from the additional colour maps, the bump maps and the depth maps that then get applied afterwards. It's like we've been playing at the crafting game without textures applied. What Eufy Make have done is bring something to the market at a significantly cheaper price point than anything I've seen. Where your standard Epson rocks in at $8,000 for an A4 version, this comes in at four to five times cheaper. In fact, let's break down how they've made this device accessible. Cost. Of course, this is key. They've radically reduced the price point and disrupted the market forever. Hardware maintenance. Professional grade printers 
are finicky and need careful maintenance to keep them running. Like lots of similar devices, like DTF printers, they also don't deal with not being used very well. So you can often come back to a device that you haven't used and need to unclog all the parts that have dried. Make have seemingly smashed this problem. It has a smart cleaning and maintenance cycle that just does it all for you. It keeps the print's head automatically moistened and it also uses a cleaning cartridge to cycle and clean itself. This comes at a cost of using a little ink each day, about one to one and a half millilitres, but it's a trade-off that is well worth it, in my opinion, for that time saved. Home users do not want to spend their weekends fixing clogged devices. Software ease of use. They have just done a great job with the software. It's very intuitive. If you use Xtools XCS, you'll be right at home. They've got lots of powerful features that I'll come back to, but it's easy to learn and simple to use. Smart tech. They've also packed in some brilliant technology solutions for things that add complexity. They have lasers to automatically judge the correct bed height. They have the best rotary device I've seen in any device, full stop. Seriously, laser cutter makers should learn a lesson. Look at how you level the object with this thing. You don't. It automatically does it. And when you put all this together, you get a device that really has entered the consumer level. It's pretty impressive engineering. The next thing that I need to explain is all the print modes, as again, these are incredibly varied and make your mind boggle with the potential. Firstly, object shapes. It comes with a small bed for normal objects, but it can also swap out for a large A3 style bed for those larger paintings or designs. It uses its laser to automatically judge the height of the objects that you insert so it can print to rough surfaces too, just obviously within reason. And then it also has the rotary tool that I mentioned, the very smart rotary tool. And if that's not enough, it also has a laminator and sticker approach that lets you print to stickers that you can then apply to objects. And when those objects can be pretty much anything, you can see how your mind starts to warp with the possibilities. Print to skateboards, surfboards, windows, doors. Mozart, the lawnmower I covered in a recent video, was printed using this. And you can see how I made the rivets and the text three-dimensional. This brings me to the print options. They are many and varied, but essentially you print in the usual CMYK colors, except you also have white. This is very useful because it allows you to apply an undercoat to surfaces that would otherwise result in a dull finish, and then print full color onto it, meaning super vivid and bright colors. It also uses layers of white to build up the 3D effect on objects. It also includes a gloss ink, which just applies a glossy finish to any prints that you want a sleek effect on. It even includes smart combinations like applying color and then white. Why? I hear you ask. Well, this is super handy if you're printing onto glass or clear surfaces and you want to have the image on the other side. So look, this isn't a dirt cheap device, but it is without a doubt a high quality piece of hardware. The range of user focused technologies they've employed are super impressive. As an aside, they've also been adding new features at a rate of knots. For example, I mentioned about depth maps being great if they could add, and it just appeared within a couple of weeks in the software. In truth, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't actually need to review this as such. You're just gonna see this being used in so many places in videos going forward. It'll just speak for itself. It's actually hard to pick out the balancing items. Yes, the camera alignment could be a little bit better, this might evolve in the coming months as it feels like a, a software tweak. It also takes a while to turn on and off, around 
15 to 20 minutes. So this isn't like an inkjet printer. This is a UV factory in a tiny form factor. So that's something to bear in mind. Yes, it's a Kickstarter. So all the conditions apply, but it's a massive company. So it's not even like when Bamboo Lab appeared and people didn't know if they would survive. It's also not a prototype. I mean, I've been using it for months. It's finished. And cutting to the chase, it's not a crazy random happenstance, but this is already, I believe, the second biggest Kickstarter in history. Now I've got loads I still need to learn about UV printing. Working out the best ways to adhere to really smooth surfaces like metal and glass that will get scratched. I know there's loads of tricks from reading forums, so it's the start of a journey for me. And there's plenty more coming from Eufy Make. Flexible white ink to allow you to print to fabrics and flexible materials. A roller system that will let you print things up to 10 meters long. Yes, you heard me. Of course, if you're wanting to print run thousands of items, then probably the higher upfront cost and maintenance costs of industrial machines will make sense to trade off against lower ink costs. Although I believe they're looking at larger ink options. But goodness me, if you have any hobby interest at all, this device will change the game for you. This is like the point the X1C was released. I mean, I could see this being the sort of device that means I'm going to have to start putting people in the dungeon if they don't get it. You have been warned. But watch this little montage of examples and comment below if it spurs any other hobbies or places around the home that you can use this. I've got such a long list of project ideas from this already but I'd hate to miss any more. to get that same feeling that I got where I realized all my crafts had just changed for good. So this device is the real McCoy. You'll see it's instantly become a permanent fixture in my manufacturing zone in my workshop. There are the usual huge discounts still on for the next few days if you're super quick. So I'll post a link in the description and do keep the ideas coming. For Barada, one of my patrons, who's been patiently waiting for my thoughts in Discord for weeks while I completed full testing. Barada, this is freaking awesome. You and your daughter will absolutely love it. Get it right now and look forward to brainstorming a whole world of new projects going forward. Oh, and Blackjack Duck, our flight sim rig idea we've been using, just changed forever. Oh, and okay. I'll stop and have a cup of tea. Oh yeah, I did this too. Catch you later, folks. And you're going to be seeing a lot more of this device. A lot more. Will Vaur.